Okay, so here's my hydronic system itself. Uh, for the most part, all of these components are mounted on one big sheet of plywood. I bought all these components separately, uh, assembled them together myself. Basically, I just copied a pre-finished system I could have bought from the big box store, uh, but by doing it myself, I did save quite a bit of money. Uh, also, when you've never done anything before, imitating something else that's known good and has a warranty, all that kind of thing, is usually a great place to start. So if we come in a little bit closer, up top, you know, kind of the heart of the system in a lot of ways is the heater. This is a 7,000 watt heater, uh, 7.2 kilowatt actually. It is a Hydro Shark 3. These are made in Germany. Um, it does use metric, so the temperature there is in Celsius. Uh, fortunately, it also lists Celsius and Fahrenheit right down here. Uh, one thing that's pretty neat about this is it's a relatively low temperature system. Um, essentially, I'm running hot tub temperatures. Uh, running warm water through a very, very, very large area is a good way to heat something. Um, a smaller heat source like just uh, cast iron radiators, you have to have much hotter water uh, to output the same amount of heat. Uh, this is flow activated. This is the input end, that's the output end. So what's kind of neat is if I feel this right now, that's pretty cold from the water coming out of the concrete. And this is nice and warm because that's uh, water coming out of the heater right here. Uh, if we follow through, there's a number of various components in here, including temperature and pressure gauges, uh, a pressure tank, uh, an air release valve, a temperature and pressure relief, which we'll come back to that in a minute because it looks kind of gross, doesn't it? Uh, basically, that's a safety feature similar to what you would have on your water heater. And here is a pump. Uh, this system has two pumps, a primary and secondary. Some systems use just a single pump. Those are usually ones that are based more on something like a domestic hot water heater. Uh, this system with the flow activated uh, electric micro boiler does use a primary secondary system, so it does use two pumps. Coming down from that pump, we got a couple of shutoff valves. Um, also here and here are what you use for uh, filling. Um, I'm, I might say water, but what's really in this system is actually an antifreeze, a glycol. So, so it comes down through here to a manifold. So right here at the stainless steel manifold, um, that heated water gets split four ways. It is four loops, although this is one zone. This is all controlled by a single thermostat, a uh, single set of pumps. And that goes down into the floor. Uh, when I originally did this, I built kind of a, a box around the end of the tubes here to keep them away from the concrete and fill that with a little insulation. So those go right down into the concrete floor and they wiggle waggle all over the place. And they eventually come back through this other four loops. So this is our return manifold. Goes to another pump through a strainer, another temperature and pressure uh, sensor, a thermometer and a, a pressure gauge. So what's nice here too is I can see the difference in temperature from the outgoing water and the return water. And I know that difference in temperature, uh, that's heat that's being put into the concrete to heat the room. And then it comes right back up here. Now for some other interesting parts of the system, uh, it is controlled with a thermostat. So the thermostat is over here. This is a very basic thermostat. Right now it says it's 55 degrees in here, uh, which is pretty luxurious when it's, you know, 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Uh, this is a very inexpensive, basic $20 thermostat. It uses low voltage, low current wiring to go to a switching relay. And then that's the device that actually turns on and off the 120 volts AC to the pumps, and that's all just goes to uh, essentially just a regular electric outlet. So nothing very fancy for the wiring or anything there either. Now, when I originally installed the system, I realized it almost doesn't need a thermostat the way a, a typical furnace would because the concrete is gonna absorb so much heat, it's gonna be very, very slow to heat up. So what I did is originally, I actually just installed literally a light switch. Um, I figure it can switch 120 volts AC, and all the wiring for thermostats is typically uh, 24 volts AC. 
So I just used a light switch to turn that relay on and off. Later, I added, uh, just going a little bit fancier with, um, with the thermostat, and I actually wired them up in parallel so I can turn the heat on with either the thermostat or with the light switch. Now, one problem with just a typical thermostat like this is uh, the device that actually measures the temperature and then decides to turn the heat on or off is built right into this unit, so it's measuring air temperature. And in this case, we don't necessarily want to measure air temperature. We actually want to measure the temperature of the concrete because that's the thing uh, being heated, which in turn heats the room. So I haven't done it yet, but I was thinking ahead when I put the tubing here uh, down into the concrete. If you count, there's actually a spare one, and that's just kind of hidden away right, right here. Still has a piece of uh, tape over the end of it. And what that was, I, I made sure to label all of these, of course, before I got started. This one is marked sensor, and it's empty, it's, it's hollow. It goes right down into the concrete just like the rest of them, and I measured where it was so that after the concrete was poured, I could, in fact, measure out and find the approximate location of the end of that tube right there. So this is out from the wall several feet. It should be pretty accurate for the overall temperature of the concrete. And the idea then is that I can get a little bit fancier thermostat and use one that has a remote sensor for sensing the temperature, run it down through that tube, and I can check the, sense, uh, check the temperature of the floor instead of the temperature of the air.